Greetings, I'm David Mashburn, a certified instructor for the SANS Institute. Thanks for joining me for this latest video in my series on DNS and OSINT. In this video, we'll explore the use of command line tools to grab DNS data. Our first tool that we're gonna use is Windows PowerShell. Convenient since it's built in. So let's take a look at the commandlets that are available for that. In this case, we have the resolve-dnsname commandlet we can use to perform that translation between a DNS name and an IP address. So we're gonna use our osint.ninja domain, and when we hit enter, we see we quickly get those results coming back. Note that by default, these are the A records. So let's repeat this process, but this time let's specify the type of record we want. In this case, we will select a type of name server or NS, and when we hit enter, those results will pop up and give us the name servers that are authoritative for that particular domain. If you remember from a previous video, you'll see that this indicates that this particular domain is handled by Cloudflare. Another key option is the ability to specify the DNS server we want to use. In this case, we use the TAC server option. We specify 9.9.9.9, .9 and that means that our DNS query was sent directly to that server. Otherwise, it uses the system default DNS servers from your IP settings. Now let's talk about another concept that we touched on in a previous video, which is the concept of recursion. When I, as a client, request recursion, I'm asking my DNS server to go out and find an answer for me and it's gonna keep asking until it gets unanswered. But notice if I directly specify no recursion, it's gonna say, hey, I can't answer that for you, probably because it's not the authoritative name server for those domains. This means that we need to make sure that when we are directly querying DNS servers, that we understand the implications of using recursion or not. Now let's transition over from our use of PowerShell and use another tool that we can use on non-Windows platforms, or in this case, we're using it with the Windows subsystem for Linux, and that is our Bash shell. And in the Bash shell, we typically have the dig utility. The dig utility allows us to do these types of queries against domain name servers, but dig has a wealth of options we can use to customize our queries. Notice the first option we're using is the at symbol where we specify an IP address or a fully qualified domain name to perform the query. In this case, we're using our domain osint.ninja again, and we hit enter and the results pop up for us. And we see by default, as was the case with our PowerShell queries, that we get the A records coming back for that particular domain that was the subject of our query. DIG also gives us a significant amount of other data. You'll notice that in addition to the answer, we also get the question that we asked, as well as the servers to which we asked it. So we get a fairly verbose response, but it's a rich set of data, and we'll see ways we can trim that out in the future, but for now, understand there's a great amount of information for us there. So let's change over and we show that we can use the type query, or TACT. And notice, the type I asked is NS, and that's reflected in the question section. And then our responses show that it's coming back with those types of records. So I can be very granular about what I want to query. So let's explore this idea of recursion again. And this time we're gonna do it with a query option called trace. So we add the plus trace to the query, hit enter, and what we see is we get each step along the way as the DNS server queries from the root to the authoritative servers for the top level domain, to the name servers for that particular domain, and then once it communicates to the name servers for the domains, it can get the answer to the question that's asked. So we can see here very clearly the recursion process. And of course, we saw earlier that if we disable recursion, typically things are going to break. So just wanted to highlight that here so we can see what's happening end to end when we're dealing with a utility like DIG. Let's take a look at one more common option that we want to use with dig, and that's the plus short option. 
That will basically trim down the information we see down to only the response. So we type out our query for osint.ninja and we see that we only get the IP addresses coming back. So it is a minimal amount of information which makes it very suitable for scripting. And of course we've combined it with another option. In that case we combined it with the type of A, but we could change it to type quad A to get the IPv6 records. And again we see we only get the response related to what we asked for. We don't see the question, we don't see the server, we don't see any of the other headers. Now one last thing we want to look at is what's called round robin uh, DNS. And notice even if we take away the type, by default we get A records, but notice how the records have rotated. That's a simplistic form of load balancing and just something you might want to be on the watch for. Thanks so much for joining me on this video regarding DNS and the use of command line tools to access that data. Hope you found it helpful.